What's a three-chip camera and why does the broadcast world use them almost exclusively? Alrighty then, three chip cameras. You may have heard of it. Today we're gonna to talk about it. Most of the things that you guys are using nowadays are single chip cameras, full frame, APS-C, Super 35, Micro Four Thirds, One Inch, those are all single chip cameras. Well, the broadcast world, the television world, up until now has always been using three chip cameras, and there's a reason for that. So what is a three chip camera? Well, a three chip camera is exactly like it sounds. It's a camera that has three chips instead of one. So when the light goes in, it actually goes on to three different chips. One is a dedicated chip that only captures the red information, the red channel. One captures only green and one captures only blue. So you get perfect color separation, the perfect, perfect color. And that's what these are good for. And the, generally the ones that they use, the professional ones are all three times two third inch, three different two third inch chips. The benefit of that is again, you get perfect color, perfect skin tones. You, you, you turn it on and you got perfect skin tones. Another benefit is chroma keying because a lot of this stuff they do on the six o'clock news is green screen or blue screen. If you have a chip that's dedicated to only green or only blue, you get perfect separation from the foreground and the background because you have one chip dedicated to just green or blue. It gives you a perfect clean mat and it gives you a perfect skin tones. And in the broadcast world, especially like the six o'clock news and stuff like that, there's no time to do color grading and logs and LUTs and all this fine tuning stuff that you YouTubers like to do. Right out of the camera, it's gotta go right into the editing, and bam, 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 it's gotta be done in like five seconds. They need perfect everything right out of the camera. That's why why they use these. All the high-end broadcast stuff that you've been seeing for the last 30 years, you know, the big football games and the interviews on Nightline and 60 Minutes and 6 o'clock news, this is what they've been using, three chip cameras. So again, the benefit of these is there's no time to mess around. You turn on the camera, push record, and you get perfect skin tones right out of the camera, and you go right into the editing bay, cut, 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 and you're done. When there's a hundred million people watching a football game, you better have good skin tones. When you have a hundred million people watching the six o'clock news, you better have good skin tones. So why don't they make three chip cameras for people like you? Well, you want the cheapest stuff possible, right? You don't want to pay a lot of money. These things are super expensive. It costs a lot more money to make three chip cameras than it does to make one chip cameras. And there's some other reasons too why you're going to want to use single chip cameras instead of three chip cameras. Again, these things are for perfect skin tones and color. You don't care about perfect skin tones and color because you want that Hollywood cinematic look, that dull gray washed out look that everybody's getting when they're shooting log and using LUTs and trying to emulate that Hollywood look. That's not perfect skin tones. You're just getting an artsy look. It's a cinematic look. What everybody cares about more than anything is that blurry background, right? And dynamic range. Well, that's what the big chip sensors give you. More low light sensitivity, more dynamic range, more resolution and a little more, more sharpness and you get your almighty blurry backgrounds. In the broadcast world, that's not that important. They don't care about that stuff. They want to have perfect skin tones and they want to have the footage done right when they shoot it and it's done. Three chip cameras are optimized for broadcast workflows where real time output is key. So it's two totally different worlds. That's why you're probably never going to want these and you want that cinematic look, right? <laughs> the broadcast world still uses three chip cameras and you can't afford <laughs> For example, the high-end Sony HDC 3200, it shoots in 4K and it has global shutter and it costs $50,000. So does the Ikigami UHK 430? $50,000. And the JVC GYHC 900 STU is only $12,000 without a lens and it only shoots 1080. As a matter of fact, most of the three chip cameras still today shoot only 1080. Why is that? Why aren't they doing 4K? Well, believe it or not, most of the cases cable TV that you're getting right now in 2025 is still only 1080i. That's interlaced. That's not even progressive. And some channels are still using 720p. And some channels, they take the 720 and they up-res it to 1080. It doesn't make it look any better. It doesn't add more detail. 
it just ensures compatibility with most TV systems out there. Some are shooting 4K, but actually most of the ones that are using 4K are the streaming channels. Cable TV is just a little slow in catching up. Some providers provide 4K like certain sports events or premium channels, but most of them are still 1080. And actually almost all of my YouTube stuff that you're watching on this channel is 1080. Right now you're watching 1080. Here's some other examples of videos that I've done. These are all 1080. Look at this. Look how amazing this looks. This is all 1080. You know, men are so obsessed with specs, the horsepower of their car, the megapixels of their cameras, 10 bit, 12 bit, the 422, the 444, everything. It's just spec, spec, spec. That doesn't make a great video. That doesn't make it interesting. It, it, no, most people out there watching can't even tell the difference. It doesn't matter. As long as what you're doing is sharp, it's in focus, the white balance is right, and the story is interesting. That's really what matters. Anyway, so I, I, I've made videos ranting about that, but let's get back to our wonderful three chip cameras here. These are all three chip cameras. This one here is a Cine Alta camera. This is a famous Sony Cine Alta. It's an EX3. This thing was the flagship of its kind when it came out. This, it's heavy. This thing is heavy and it, it is really good. Actually, I've got two of them. Here's some footage that I've done with it. This is actually pretty good stuff. Look at the skin tones. This is right out of the camera. I didn't touch it up. I didn't do anything. I just pushed record and it's just so pleasing to see real natural skin tones without having to do any color grading or anything. Just right out of the camera. So this is the Cine Alta PMW EX3. This is the bigger brother of the EX1. You can actually take the lens off. It has a half inch bayonet mount and with an adapter, you can also use use a two-third inch bayonet mount professional Canon or Fujinon half inch and two-third inch professional video lenses which are industry standard mounts. Not sure if they make adapters to consumer lenses. Anyway, it has three half inch sensors. It has two Sony Express Card 34 slots that you can record up to 800 megabytes per second with. But there are adapters you can buy so you can record onto an SD card. Just stick it in there. And you can also record 422 externally via SDI onto something like a Shogun. It also has an 8-pin connector for studio applications, it has a BNC out, S-Video out, two XLR audio inputs, time code in, time code out, all kinds of connectors on here. This thing is fully loaded. All right, and here we have the Sony HVR Z5U. It has a 30 to 600 millimeter professional G lens with a 20 times zoom and Sony's three clear vid CMOS sensor system that has Cinematone gamma and Cinematone color. It outputs HDMI, has shutter speeds up to one ten thousandth of a second, so you can darken the exposure on a really bright day. It has three one-third inch sensors and it'll record onto memory stick duo cards, mini DV, or HDMI out to something like a Ninja for the highest quality. The sensors are positioned at 45 degrees so you get clear, sharp diagonal lines with no jaggies. And it shoots 1080, 24p, or 30p. All right, and here we have the Panasonic HPX 170p. This is the most lightweight of the three. It inherits many of the functions of the popular Vericam, which enhanced the production of movies and television programs. It takes 32 gigabytes P2 flash memory cards or you can record 422 externally via SDI to something like a Shogun. It has a 13 times zoom and three 1 3rd inch sensors with a 14 bit CCD signal processor. It does 24p and 30p. It has cine light gamma curves and cine light color matrix and optical image stabilization. Look at all the connections on the back of this thing. These two are three CMOS and this is three CCD. This is an older technology CCD. The newer ones are CMOS. And actually my favorite camcorder for the longest time was the Panasonic X900. That was a three chip CMOS camera also. I've used that thing for so many things. This was about 14 years ago. I did documentaries with it. I did interviews with it. And I always noticed how wonderful the colors were. It was so easy to dial in the colors and they were rich and colorful and bold and it just had a really nice look to it. It wasn't the sharpest camera, but the colors were so amazing. Matter of fact, I still have one in a box here. X900 in the box. But generally three chip cameras are mainly used for broadcast official television stuff. And as always, I have too many cameras, so I am going to, drum roll, give these away. So I am actually going to give away a Cine Alta camera. Yes sirree Bob. I have two of these, but I'm going to keep one of them. I'm going to give away the Z5U, I'm going to give away the 170, and I'm going to give away an X900 also. That's at marcuspix.giveawayenter.com. Broadcast camera three chip giveaway. Now remember, these are only 1080. 
and they're used. I don't have the box. I don't have the fancy stuff that goes with it. It's just straight camera. I think I got batteries for them. I might have a charge cable, but you get the camera and you can have fun with them. This one here, that it has a LCD screen that has a viewfinder that clicks down over it. So that's kind of interesting. You, you could, it magnifies the LCD screen. Both of these have eyepieces too. Actually, they all do. Both the EX3 and the 170 have SDI out. The Z5U has HDMI out. And yes, the X900 also has HDMI out. If you have any other questions, do your research. I don't have time to answer all your questions about these cameras. Do your research before you pick the one you want. You should know how to use camcorders because there is a little bit of a learning curve to use things like this. These are a little bit more professional with all kinds of dials and knobs and stuff like that. So um, anyway, yeah, so three chip camera is kind of an interesting subject. I thought I'd bring it up and uh, you know, the, the newer single chip cameras, they are getting better with colors and skin tones. They're eking out as much as they can out of that single chip, but there is that limitation of not having the three separate channels of color. So that's where these things shine. Anyway, I thought you might enjoy this. I, you know, try to give you stuff that's different, interesting, unique, and fun in the photography world. That's me. Okay, well. <laughs> Uh, MarcusPix.GiveawayEnter.com if you want a three chip broadcast quality camera and if not I'll see you in the next video anyway until then have a good one